I wonder, did you sit and listen today, James, and were you thinking, yes, that's the next Prime Minister? I think he will be the next Prime Minister. I, I listened to some of it today. I think the take-back control line, despite Keir Starmer himself being a Remainer when that kind of thing actually mattered, I think the take-back control line is a good one politically because... Lots of people in the, the quote-unquote red wall seats who were traditional Labour voters who voted for Boris Johnson did so on the basis that, that Westminster was going to take back control, on the basis that their local community would be able to take back control, on the basis of levelling up some of these local communities which had been left behind. Um, but I feel like today, uh, many, well, many people in those communities don't feel like um, they have taken back control. Service, public services don't work. Local authority funding is, is in many places, more patchy than ever. Um, Rishi Sunak appears to have abandoned the levelling up agenda, which Boris Johnson was, was touting, which I think was one of Boris Johnson's better ideas. Um, I think there is a political space there for him to say, look, you voted for Brexit, I might not have agreed with it. Um, where is this taking back control of our lives? Do people feel now that they're more in control of their daily lives than they did in 2016? I very much doubt that. Uh, but do you think then that the answer is about devolution? Is that what's going to give you the control back? I think devolution makes sense in, in some respects because the local community is, is the play, they know what, they, what the needs are in their specific area. The different, different parts of the country, so some of the left behind areas that voted for Brexit, former industrial areas, their needs are very different from, from parts of, say, inner city London or, or rural areas which have their own problems. OK. Lord Moylan, was it a Prime Minister in waiting? Were you inspired by Starmer today? Oh, well, I wasn't exactly inspired. He is, of course, a Prime Minister in waiting, and it's the government's job to ensure that he remains waiting um, a very long time. Um, he has a chance. Uh, the speech was remarkable for two things, really. The first was how very full of contradictions it was. Um, you know, he's going to solve the NHS, but he isn't going to spend any more money on anything. He's going to increase the numbers of staff, but he's going to be very careful about, um, about the financial side of it. There won't be any sticking plasters and, and so on, but there aren't any policies to replace it. And he's going to, by the way, he's going to legislate to ensure that the ambulance service can leave you on the side of the road and have your heart attack um, after the government has put legislation in place to, to stop that happening or to limit the chance of that happening. <clears throat> he never will do that. If, that. if this legislation passes, it will remain on the statute book and Labour will never, never remove it, just as they never removed Mrs Thatcher's um, union laws. But he's got to say this for the union. So it's a very political sort of speech. But the part I agree with James about is that he's certainly been listening. There's a, there's a bunch of people who, um, within the Labour Party, is called the Blue Labour Group, who are uh, Brexit-supporting people who feel that the Labour Party has lost touch with its traditional base, which is certainly true, and they feel they've got some solutions to that. And for the first time, they're being listened to by the Labour, Labour leadership. And so this idea of take-back control and, and trying to take over, it's very cheeky in a way, I mean, very audacious, take that phrase over and make it a Labour Party phrase. I mean, it's a very brave thing to do. Um, I think he is onto something there. Where I think he's wrong and where I disagree with James is that I, don't th I think people do want more control over their lives. And I think they want, for example, not to be told you can only drive at 64 miles an hour on the, mm. on the motorway because of net zero. Um, that's the sort of thing they don't want, they want to be in control of. But I think the idea of simply saying we're going to have a new level of regional government, <clears throat> more mayors, a bit more power for councils, I think that approach to taking back control is tremendously unimaginative and has increasingly misses the point. There has to be something more imaginative and more effective which feels, makes people feel that they are more in charge of their lives, not simply that they've got another level of local government on top of them. Oh.